everyone. This is Becca Kephart with the Ladies of the Chains Disc Golf Podcast. Kim Janola from Team MVP. And I'm Nova64 Polite of Team Ozone Discs. We're back to bring you commentary of the first round of the Jonesboro Open for the feature FPO card. Our card has Jessica Weiss, Jennifer Allen, Sarah Hokum, and Kona Panis. If you're wondering why last year's Jonesboro Open winner Paige Pierce is not on the feature card, she wasn't sure if she was going to make this tournament, but she did, and she is playing here at this beautiful disc side of Heaven Course. We'd like to thank Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Pro Tour, and the PDGA for this coverage. And you're going to see a little bit of a different layout of this course if you've been watching the MPO action. FPO fe features 11 different holes than MPO, whether that's pin placement, tee length, or par. Let me start off here. I want to give a big thanks to everyone who liked and gave us kind words for our previous effort at Waco. We do appreciate it. Jennifer Allen, first up on the tee, and listen to the crowd. That's nearly in. Driving first, she may be putting last. Sarah Hokum, forehand line, testing that trouble on the left-hand side. Hooking up nicely, drops inside circle one as well. Jessica Weiss, next up. It's a little bit of turn. That's testing the trees on the right-hand side. Stays clean, pin high on the right. And last, Kona Panis. She's also testing out that tree on the right-hand side. Yeah, turned a little bit more than she wanted. Yeah, and gets the last branch possible, unfortunately. And if you watched coverage from the Jonesboro Open last year, you may remember that this was an elevated basket, but it's not this year. And it's at 380 feet. So, potentially reachable for everyone here. And there's Jennifer Allen. Yeah, really good start for Jen. Bringing in the birdie. She's one of uh, two birdies on the day for this particular hole on the women. Played as a even par with two birds and two bogeys. We're moving off of hole one. Jennifer Allen took the lone birdie on our feature card, and we're going to move into hole two. Hole two is 605 feet, par four. You can see obstructed right off the tee. You kind of get to pick your path on this one if you want to go left or right. Sarah Hokum's up uh, next. You can probably guess she's going to take the forehand line. Oh, and she's none too pleased to get in a little early. Looking at the weather, you can see that uh, low gray sky. This is first week of March weather, and we're having it in the first week of April. Spring is about a month late, and we're all really eager to see spring any day now. There are rumors of snow later in the weekend. And Kona just ripped that drive. You know, we're talking all the time about the big arms of Paige and of Kat and Jennifer Allen. And I believe Kona just outdrove uh, Jennifer Allen. She throws far. You can see the flag for the basket silhouetted there against that uh, tree trunk. So no spoilers. We're just going to assume everything's landing pretty close on the green and we'll all see it together. Yeah, that looked like two really good upshots there by Kona and Jen. Sarah catches a little bit of a flare skip there. We'll see where that's come down. Here's Kona for her birdie. Just outside the circle, it looks like. Just a little yeah. short and to the left. Knew it as soon as she let go of it. Here's Jen from inside the circle for her birdie, and she converts. That's two for two. There's so much power behind that. You can see it in her, the way she kicks her leg. Oh, tough spit out there for Hokum. Jessica converts her comebacker. And 
Kona will hopefully do the same. And Sarah will come tap in her bogey and we'll move on to hole three. Jen Allen maintains her lead on this card at two under. Hole three is 310 feet and really a must get. It's right there and unobstructed. Absolutely. The basket is right there and all you need to do is throw it up there and sit it under the basket just like that. And it looks like Jess is throwing the new uh, Garrett Gerthy Signature Pharaoh. It's a stable distance driver and she throws it really well. And I believe Kona is throwing a destroyer here. I'm wrong. Someone let me know in the comments. And that is a good rip. Yeah, yeah parked right up there just as well. And plenty of room for a forehand on this hole as well. That's outside of circle one. That's going to be a bit of a tester. This hole played uh, as one of the three without a bogey today. It was very clean. Feature card is going to walk away with some birds and some pars. Mm -hmm. Jessica Weiss just tapped in her par after that unfortunate putt. Kona to convert the birdie after that great drive. Yeah. Parked a 310-foot shot That's like it was nothing uphill. Best kind of birdie putt right there. She collects her high five. And drop in for Jen, and that is a turkey for Jen. Great way to start a tournament, I wouldn't know, but three for three. And we're gonna head into hole four, and hole four is pretty far, 630 feet, par four. Lots of trouble off of the tee. You can either pick this kind of straight ahead tunnel shot that Jen took, or go for a hyzer to the outside right. Uh, Kona Penis claps her hands like she's unhappy, but that disc refuses to give up and continues to skip all the way to the 250 foot marker. Little early release yeah. there from Jess. That's Sarah Hokum showing that terrific forehand form. Not too pleased with the result though. Yeah, she kept it low, but then got hung up uh, mm -hmm. under that tree when she hyzered out there. And that is a large tree. This forehand roller needs to stand up. And this is a bit of a tricky approach shot. There is OB danger on your approach. If you go too long or off to the left there, you can see the wall. Sarah taking full advantage of the new rules for the lie. Stretches out a little extra far out of that tree and gets up out of trouble. Kona with another rip there. Look at that flare skip. She's throwing far. Good hit forehand up from just there. She's very, very good with both the backhand and the forehand. Look forward to seeing where that's sitting because I imagine it's got to be very close. Yeah, a little outside the circle. Oh, that's and she converts. Point. Didn't matter. She canned it anyway. Sarah so, from maybe just inside the circle. Great save. Really great save. That was a really good putt. And nice easy par for Jen there. And sure enough, Kona's upshot looks real good. Can she convert on the birdie right here? Takes her time, one puts it right in. Sorry, one of four on the day. So after hole four, Four. We've got Jen Allen at three under, Kona at two under. That brings us to hole five. It's a really interesting hole. You get to make your decision if you're going to lay up or go for the pin. It's 345 feet for the ladies. Kona Panos plays it safe with a spike hyzer that sticks nicely into the ground, tombstones up. Jennifer Allen 
going for it gets a little bit turned over into those trees that are standing in the OB so the disc has nowhere to drop but OB. Yep, if you go for it, you do run that risk of those trees grabbing your disc, and if they get it, it's going straight down. Kona Panis skips just out of sight into the landing zone. Give her a nice look across the way. And Sarah Hokum follows suit. That's a perfect standstill uh, layup there from Sarah. So Jen's got a throw from the drop zone, and she hangs that out a little bit more to the left than she would have liked. Going to Panis, spikes one in. And you can see if you get your layup close enough to the wall like Jess did here, you can almost run it a little bit. Jennifer Allen coming back for the big, it's a bogey save, but that's got to feel really good from that far outside circle one. That could have very easily been a double bogey. Kona fails to convert there. That is a missed opportunity. But very nice clean hole from Jess there. Takes her par. Mm-hmm. And Sarah Hokum as well. Had one birdie on the day. Two guesses as to who got it. Would that be Paige Pierce? That would be Paige Pierce. <laughs> All right, and we're moving on to hole six, which is really one of the signature holes out here, throwing over the water into an island green. And this plays wonderfully for the forehand. If you got it, you can throw it right into the hill, and that's a great shot by uh, Jessica there. Sarah's going to also try for the forehand. That is a little too turned over, and yep. it just never had a chance. I like that new stockade fence that they've put up. I think last year it was just the uh, temporary barricades. Sure. Yeah, it really allows you to put a little more power behind it if you oh. want to go straight. And if it skips up, it can hit that and come back. That was a great drive by Kona. Jen trying to make that island, but unfortunately that's going to hyze her out of bounds. And it was really interesting. Kona posted on her Instagram uh, during a practice round that she was using a Star Roadrunner for this hole, which I thought was really interesting because I would be way too scared to throw something that understable. But you can see, I don't believe that probably was the same disc that she just used, and she had wonderful control on that disc. Well, nice thing about a Star Roadrunner is you can count on it to continue to fade a little bit to the mm -hmm. right or straight. If you get even just a little bit of nose up, it's not going to hyze her out and go OB to the left. Right. Here's Kona for that birdie. And she converts. Mm -hmm. So with Jen taking the bogey, that's a two-stroke stroke swing in Kona's favor on this hole. We have one of our local players from Kansas City who came down to Jonesboro to play this tournament. And big shout out to Kaylee Kincaid for doing that. My first question to her after round one was, did you stick the island? And she's like, yes, I did. <laughs> Hole number seven, par four, 615 feet. Fairway is straight and the moves left a little bit before a right finish. It's also slightly uphill. Good rip there by Jess. Good shot by Sarah as well. Jen's going to air one out here. I think Sarah hung that out a little bit left from where she wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Needs to be just a bit more to the right.
I believe this is a little bit more uphill than the camera's showing as well. You can see these ladies with their run-ups. Looks like they're going uphill and throwing those up as well. Mm -hmm. Jennifer Allen, not happy with that. She's got that too wide. She even said so. Mm, she's got a pretty good window there. I don't think... Might have been a little bit further left than she wanted, but it still had a good good look. And check out that forehand touch shot from Kona. That was really nice. And Jen, unfortunately, finds a tree on her upshot there. Not at all happy trying to get that upshot through jail. It just didn't quite work out. A little too high for Jess, and she catches some branches there. Oof. Oh, that's rough. That would have been the par save. Yeah, Jen wanted that one for sure. Another rough putt there from Sarah. Yeah, she knows that when an opportunity like that comes up, you've got to get it. Absolutely. Good par there from Jess. This is a tough hole today. We didn't have a single bird from the women. No birds on this card as well, uh, the feature card. So that just goes to show how tough it was for the rest of the field as well. All right, we're moving in to hole eight. Kona leading this card at two under. Hole eight, you've got a tree and right in front of the basket. And this works really well for a forehand or a turnover. Yep. Only 324 feet, but it's to an elevated basket. So you really want to be well inside circle one when you hit. This is also the hole that Simon parked with the backhand roller last year, which I thought was so cool, and so the shot that I would want to try. Yeah, there's a devil on my shoulder that tells me to do things like that, too. <laughs> I try to stifle it. Nice. Have you been practicing your backhand Sarah. roller, Becca? Um, I've got a disc that if I put any amount of juice on it, any amount of ante on it, it rolls. But the danger is that group of trees on the right side, not finding those. Jen Allen skirts that group of trees uh, short and right, and she'll have a putt back to the basket. Sarah oh. rails the birdie putt on the elevated basket. And that is a great putt after missing that one on the hole prior that I'm sure she wants back. A huge confidence boost, no doubt. A little too much hyzer on that one for Jess. Kona for her birdie. Ooh, just a little bit more air needed under that one. Those DGPT canisters are loud. Yes, they are. Kind of adds insult to injury when you miss, I suppose. Some sort of gong of shame. And I love that Jen just tightened her shoe there. I think it's so easy to forget in the moment. Make sure you feel good. Make sure everything feels right. And also watch the gallery behind Jen. They are totally still as she's putting. They look like mannequins. That's a thousand rated gallery right there. Watch them freeze here again for Jess. And Jess converts her par. Kona will tap in her par as well. And we're going to be moving on to the final hole of the front nine. Jen picks up another stroke. Kona still leads the card at two under. And hole nine is a tough one. 715 foot par five. And as strange as it may sound, par five, 715 feet. This is the hole the women played the best today. Well... And it may be a little bit of a tweener hole, too. We'll have to see how it works out for our feature card here. There's definitely trouble to be had, but there's also a lot of open space. Oh, for sure. The main thing is to avoid this tree that is just going out of sight on the right-hand side of the camera. It sits right in the middle of the fairway, and you can go to the left or the right of it, but if you go into it, you're going to have a lot of work. And, of course, you've got to get clear of these initial trees as well. Just hunt up early but a great forehand out from where she was. 
And you'll see as you get closer to the basket too, it's a little bit of a tricky green. There's a drop off behind the basket. So you definitely don't want to go long on your approach. It's true. And it's also got trees on the right hand side and it slopes from left to right. So it's very easy for a forehand to get down and in there. Kona with just a massive rip. Jennifer Allen not happy with how far left that went. Sarah Holcomb flexes uh, up shot up there onto the green. Jessica Weiss gives that bit of a half go. Yeah, Jen definitely went pretty left there. Uh -huh. And you can see the slope of the green. Nice. Oh, Kona, star panis young lady, that's an eagle. You run that in. <laughs> I can say she's a young lady. I'm master's age. <laughs> Sarah to convert here for her birdie, and she nails it. Neither of those are easy putts. No. When you miss that, you run the risk of going down the hill. Yeah, that's going to add two to your score, not just one. And good putt there for Jess as well. Two eagles on the day, seven birdies, and six pars. So maybe no. a little bit of a tweener hole, yeah, at no. least for this round on this day. Yeah. With that eagle, Kona Penis makes up two strokes to go to four under for the front nine. She leads our feature card. We'll catch you on the back nine.